Hi, this is Vaughan at westcopebellpottery.ca. Um, I'm going to do a little video here, a very short one after the last one, which I think was about an hour long. But anyway, I'm going to... Uh, Bill Wright at um, artisanpotterytools.com just sent me four new tools. Um, and he wants me to try them out. And they look like a great, much better uh, and more diverse tool um, than the ones he sent me before. They have slight variations. Um, there's the heads. They're sharp on both sides of the cutting tool. Um, and two of them are totally flat as far as the angle goes. And two of them are, let's see if I can get this position right, are diagonals. So that but some of them will dig in a bit easier than others. Um, there you go. And they've all got the sharpened V at the front, but they're sharp on both sides of the tool. <clears throat> and if you can see, there's the slight variations in the angle. So I'm thinking that there will, some will cut in a bit easier, some will cut maybe too easy, and so it'll be a bit dangerous. And others will be a little easier because of the angle cutting away from how you're holding it. But let's see what we do anyway. But this is an R2, which I like to use for my trimming. Oh, I just ordered myself, uh, just before Christmas, a new pug mill. So, um, so I'm going to clean up my old one, and I will be selling that. Somebody wanted to buy, buy it from me about a year ago, because I thought about buying it. But I wanted to wait to see how good the year was, and the year was good, even though it was slow at the end of the year. But overall, the year was up from the year before. So the R2, this trimming tool is Kemper, um, and it wears out fast. And the more the drier the clay, the faster it will wear out too. So. But I just like it, it's, it's the one that I don't have to put a huge amount of pressure on to get a good cut. And I just like opening up the center of my balls like that at the bottom, so we can glaze it and have a foot. And I can still fire it then, or I can actually just sit it on the foot. There we go. So this is the tool that will is angled so that it's you have to really go in to get it cut deep into the into the cut you have to hold it really tall like that. But if you hold it like that, it's actually perpendicular, which is quite comfortable to hold. Um, so and this clay is quite dry, so it'd be quite hard to get it in. But let's let's see which I'm going to go with the the cut that's like that first. Oh. That's quite smooth. So I'm going to trim that out. These are brand new tools I'm just playing. And the clay is quite dry as you can see. So let's do, this is the one that we're just using. So I'm gonna to try to not have it do that quite as much. That's a very subtle texture, and if I didn't glaze that area, that would be very interesting, but it doesn't dig deep enough to actually get a good glaze um, change. This one, oh, I've still got the tape on some of these, but, um, so let's see, what I'm gonna do is just do a, a little thing at the edge there. That's a nice finish to that area there. So these are really bouncy. Let's get that stuff out of the center there. 
think I'll leave that one the way it is. Okay, this is the tool that's angled away from me again, so let's see what it does here. Got to be careful not to dig in too hard, because sometimes they catch if you dig with your head on it too hard. That's another very subtle one. Let's see what we get with the end here. Oh, wow. Yeah, it almost does it better with the end. Let's do another one up here then. some definition here though. That looks pretty amazing, doesn't it? Okay, I'm going to try this one. So it's one that's fairly flat on as far as the angle goes. Um, and it's sharpened on both sides. So let's see what this one does. It almost pulled the piece out then, so I know it dug in pretty hard. So this one digs, it does a, a deeper cut. Um, so um, there's no number on these tools, but um, so I can't tell you exactly, but that's the profile. You can just give this the timestamp in my movie if you want, um, if you're ordering any of these tools from, from Bill. But um, anyway, let's do the edge. Now, as you can see, I'm learning these tools too. This is the first time I've touched this tool. So, um, which I think is valid because uh, you can see that, you know, when you get a tool, you have to learn how to use it. And it's a good idea to run your trimming tool just over to knock any sharp points off. You don't want to have anything sharp enough to cut when you get the glaze on there. But that's pretty good. It's a fairly quick and very interesting kind of texture and pattern to create. Now I'm going to use the same tool, but there I was doing it like that. Now I'm going to try it the other way around like this. And this way I think you have to be a little careful that you don't pull the, the pot off the wheel, we'll try. I'll do it gentle at first. Get started instantly. Yeah, 
let's see what we got. Oh yeah. So this was easy to, to start it doing the chattering. And now I'm gonna go with the end of it down here. almost doesn't need a trimming line because it's so tight. Well, that, yep, no, in many ways I could just leave that without any lines in between. Mm. But I do like my lines. Don't really need one there. Let's see what happens. Do a double one. Yeah, I like the lines that I put on. Gives it a very, I don't think it looks machine made, but I think that the line gives it a tightness uh, to show control. Okay, this is the angle that I used in, uh, in a, a previous bowl, and it wasn't very easy to control. Um, so I'm just going to try it like holding this way and see what it does. And so it's tilted over past 90 degrees from the bowl. That was quite vigorous. So it's uh, it's bounced around a little bit, but it gives a, a texture. But I didn't feel like I was controlling that very well. Um, let's see whether I can just use the edge and go over it. gave me two different so there's a potential for two different marks using just that edge um, so that was quite interesting but there's like a mark here to there and then another one from here to there so I'm just going to identify that slow it down again so yeah that might I, yeah, I'd actually left a big ridge on this pole anyway to start where I was going to start from, so I can just leave that up there. Wow, yeah, that's quite nice. Just leave that on the way it is. So it's basically, look, you know, look back in the beginning of the video, but that's the way this tool is angled, but the end did these two textures, which was really nice. I just noticed that these tools have, they're very much uh, the same as far as the angle of cutting, but they're longer. One's got a much longer War, like a lion length of it is much longer. So this one's shorter, this one's longer. You can see, I think I can hold it together. So that's the difference between these two. So now I'm gonna try this one. This is the longer one. I'm not sure what we can get with this one. It's kind of hard to put there, but here it'll be better. Still go, yeah, going really fast. Mm. 
that was very bouncy and it did a really good texture and it was pretty easy to get that so that didn't feel uncomfortable in my hand doing that just judging the weight of pressure on the tool because if you get too much you're going to dig into the clay and it's going to pull the pot off the, even the giffing grip will release it but that was quite nice let's see what the end does So that's pretty good. That that has a nice uh, effect as well. Now this is a much bigger bowl. Uh, this is a three pound bowl and the other ones were actually one and a half pound bowls. Um, so it'll be a different um, kettle of fish as far as the angles and everything because it's a much more gradual curve on this bowl, I guess. So let's see what happens with this. See the edge down there? That's actually really interesting and I keep tightening it up, but that's really nice. So I won't cut that off this time. But it had a definite difference in angle just here to here. Um, and both are nice. So why don't I give it some defi definition with just the edge? Mm, that's nice. So the top here. Some different, oh, yeah. I think that's got some. I'm not sure what to do there because it looks nice the way it is. So, let me just tighten this one up. My plan is not to glaze these areas this time, it's to leave the clay raw. Um, no glaze on the decorative areas. Let me just give it something a bit past the decoration. Yeah, I think that's just going to be the way it is. So I'm trying to give myself a pattern rather than a um, uh, than a texture. We're going to keep it going slow. Okay, so that's more of a pattern. There was a place here where there's a bump and I think it's um, the clay was harder to control that there. But, um, but that's definitely more of a pattern than a texture. So now let's go fast. I'm just catching the giffing grip there. Oh, it's almost like diagonal lines going around there. So very different uh, using the edge there, depending on fast or slow. Let's give myself a little.
And guess what I'm going to do next? Well, I guess you can see what I've... <laughs> it's a hole completely covered this time. There is so much potential with doing these things. And just remember to make sure there's nothing short, but there's a bump, I can feel it. That was causing a little problem. But, um, but you can see we've got some interesting things going on here. I'm going to try a different tool now to see what happens with the mark making. It's a texture but it has wider marks across. Um, so let's do that again at a faster speed. So it intensified it a little bit, but there's no pattern created with that. It sort of kept, I was looking to see whether diagonals would come up again, um, but um, let's see what happens if I do an area with just this. pushed in I think the clay a little bit there so let's do this and see whether it might show up on the inside at this point okay, in for a penny in for a pound eh the clay is pretty soft on this piece um, but it is giving some deep textures but the pressure of the tool might have made it show through on the inside because it's, my balls are generally fairly thin. I think I'll leave that and just run my head. This is very heavily textured, so I'm going to run my finger over it just to knock any nasty bits off. Let's see what we see on the inside. Oh, no, we don't see anything. I was sure I'd see something there, but the inside is fine. But that's uh, because the clay is quite soft. Um, but anyway, that's, that's good. It means we didn't ruin the ball. But um, as you can see, it is a pretty heavy texture there. Okay, this is the last ball that I have thrown. So let's go very slow and see if we can get this pattern thing going. Okay, that's kind of what I was after. So we, we don't get a big textural thing, it's just a pattern. Um, so it's just a matter of going slower, but you know, I'm still new, I'm beginning. So um, just learning the tool. Well, let's go faster again up here. Okay, 
Okay, so we got our defined edge. And that looks pretty good. Take this excess off the inside there. There you go, that's a much uh, more pattern and texture. And don't forget that you can also do the inside of these. So let's have a little go here. That's quite nice. So that's just to whet your appetite. You can do the inside as well as the outside. So the outside is decorated on the lower half and the inside on the upper half. So if you get some of these tools, it's um, you know artisanpotterytools.com. Um, and uh, if you say VS2, um, Bill Wright will give you a discount. And so I think there's something off the shipping as well or something. But anyway. Um, just um, check the website out and see whether you like the tools. I have um, been doing a lot of these and I definitely am impressed. Right.